SoFi is firing on all cylinders right now. Over the past couple of days alone, several pieces of news have come out which are all very bullish for the company, yet nothing has been covered so far on mainstream media. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about that news, some of which came out just earlier today, why it's so important and why it's not talked about nearly enough. Okay, so first things first, SoFi came out earlier today and raised their APY for their savings account to 4.4%. This has been steadily increasing, keeping along with the interest rate hikes, and it's now one of the most competitive value propositions out there from an APY perspective. At 4.4%, SoFi is among the most generous financial institutions from an APY perspective. If you still look at some of the major banks, they're still at 0.1% negligible. And all of this, is enabled by the bank charter and the flexibility that the bank charter allows the company to give back to its members in the form of an APY. And by doing so, it advertises the product offering and it entices more people to come into their ecosystem. It entices more deposits to enter their ecosystem. And while that's all very bullish in itself, we know that once rates start to fall slightly towards the maybe first half of 2024, that the savings APY is also going to start to fall as a response because it's not sustainable to keep a high APY when rates are very low, right? And I don't want to harp on this point for too long because SoFi has been consistently raising their savings APY to the point where we've talked about it and it's positive, it's not ground shattering, especially because, you know, the flip side of this news is that usually when the savings APY rises, the checking APY falls, right? SoFi is trying to incentivize actions from their users to put more money into that savings and less money into that checking, right? To, to have a long-term focus. This time around, the savings APY went from 4.3 to 4.4%, just 0.1% rise. As a result, the checkings APY fell from 1.2% down to 0.5%, which is a much bigger drop. And the reason I don't want to harp too much on it is because a lot is going to depend on what the Fed does in their next meeting this week. They have signaled a pause. However, they've been hawkish around a further rate hike towards the end of the year. And in fact, there's growing sentiment among many Fed members that we could have rate hikes as early as this Fed meeting in July. Personally, I'm of the opinion that there's not really going to be any more further hikes. Maybe maximum we might see one more hike towards the end of the year. I don't think that the Fed is going to act so brashly to raise rates in July again, especially after pausing for a very short period of time. I've said this before, but with regards to the falling inflation, it's a path of no return. The Fed has to act very hawkish to the market so that they don't signal dovishness, which will send the market skyrocketing and won't really do anything for inflation. They need to sustainably see inflation falling for a period of time. And if inflation does not fall in a meaningful way, then of course there's gonna be some more serious conversations about a further rate hike. Personally, though, I think it's reckless to rate hike in July and doing it so early because that doesn't allow the Fed an opportunity to see if their strategy is working. They can very easily overcorrect on the raises and have further problems downstream. So I do think that there will be a pause, maybe a further hike towards the end of the year, although I don't think that that's going to be the case personally. I've been wrong many times and I will continue to be wrong many times into the future. So take that with a massive spoonful of salt. Uh, the, main, the main piece of news, however, was that SoFi informed users earlier today that starting on August 30th, issuing banks for SoFi's credit cards are going to change from the Bank of Missouri to SoFi Bank. Now, while this might be an email that a lot of people ignore, uh, especially a lot of users ignore, it might seem like a very trivial change. W one thing you'll remember, I hope, if you're a consistent viewer, is that several months ago, SoFi moved their checking accounts away from the US Bank Corp and in-house into SoFi Bank. And in that video, if you'll remember, when I covered the news, I mentioned that the next lowest hanging fruit for them was to change the issuing bank for credit cards. They started off with checkings and now they're doing credit cards a few months after that. On the SoFi Weekly Podcast, we've discussed at length one of the major bull cases for SoFi, which is this further vertical integration with regards to their technology cores. SoFi is currently built on many different technology cores. They have their own technology for lending, but they also have licensed 
cores for checking, savings, credit cards, and they also have a fourth partner that takes care of their investment product. Now, this is all very cluttered with all of these licensing partners. And Anthony Noto mentioned last year that the future goal is to have everything under a singular multi-product core that serves all products and then can be further extended out to include new products as well. And the slide that you're seeing on your screen right now, uh, Riley put this together in the last SoFi Weekly podcast when we were talking about this very issue. And the acquisition of Wyndham Capital and a lot of work that's been happening with regards to the merge between Galileo and Technicis from an infrastructure perspective, as well as the news several months ago with the issuing bank changing from US Bancorp onto SoFi for the checking accounts. And this news and this most recent news on the issuing bank change for credit cards, all of these play a significant role in this multi-product approach. They're all steps into that ladder to go to that multi-product approach. Because as Anthony Noto mentioned in 2022, they will be achieving this through partnerships or through creating it in-house. And when we think about this multi-product core, this will eventually cut out all of those licensing partners and if you think logically, what it's going to do is it's going to have better margins and further savings down the road for their own product offerings. Because if they're not licensing to a third party, they're paying less, meaning that they have more flexibility to have more lucrative product offerings. And one of the things that we mentioned that the bank charter allowed them to do was flexibility around the APY. This is why SoFi can have one of the most competitive offerings on the market is because they now have a bank charter and it's a similar model, right? They don't have to go to a third party, which will take a fee and it allows SoFi much less flexibility to move around. After bringing everything in house and being fully vertically integrated from a technology perspective, they can have that flexibility if, if they wanna offer more enticing member benefits or if they wanna offer a higher APY or whatnot, depending on what the core is, right? So that's obviously very positive because it starts this entire flywheel of them having more flexibility equals more enticing offers equals more members and so on and so forth. The faster that SoFi can move towards this multi-product core, the faster they can white label this and outsource it to other financial institutions. Now, when I say SoFi here, I'm mentioning the holding company of SoFi and Galileo together, not just the B2C company of SoFi, right? However, one thing to notice is that these things are not necessarily mutually exclusive because as we noted in last week, SoFi Weekly, SoFi as a company is currently not leveraging Galileo for as much as they could have right now because they're rather focused from the Galileo perspective on offering the core services to legacy players that need them most while SoFi as a company is licensing from other technology partners until they can get to a point where they can achieve this multi-product core and then merge everything in-house. Either way, without getting too much into the weeds, this news is massively bullish because it validates and it confirms that the company is on the right direction with regard to that 2024-2025 timeline that they promised was going to be a time when we can expect them to be on a multi-product core with everything fully in-house from a core banking technology perspective. And ultimately, the reason why I wanted to make this video was to share some of my raw thoughts in the moment as I was reading this news and to cover it because it doesn't get enough media attention from a mainstream finance news perspective. It is something relatively inconsequential from a news perspective, but it's also relatively inconsequential from a user perspective. This is one of those service announcements that you get in your inbox and you immediately delete when a company changes their you know, terms of service or something like that. But it is very important because of what it signals and because of the direction that SoFi is going in. And because of that specifically, I don't want it to fall under the radar because it shows that SoFi is still putting in the work to get to that multi-product core, which is very exciting because it further validates that 2024, 2025 timeline. That's it for me for now. For right now, this has been the Fundamentals Investing Podcast. If you enjoyed this channel, subscribe below. If you enjoyed this video, share it out with a friend and I will see you in the next one.